Hello. Hello, everybody. We're here. Hey-ya. 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 Who have we got in the house? Hey-ya. Oh, I've got the, got the cable all the way over there. Who's in? Who's in? Who's in? I can't see the stream in the chat. I don't either. I'm just trying to find it. Here we go. Is right. anybody there? John's in. John. Hello, John. Hello, John. And there are ten wonderful people over already. ready to learn how to play Underworld. Well, you've come to the wrong place. <laughs> No, we are going to teach you. We're going to teach you how to play the game, but not necessarily how to be good at it. Yes. We'll teach you the basics and and hopefully a little bit of, of sort of tactics and some of the nuance around it all. But yeah, uh, when it comes to winning trophies, we, we haven't done that we yet. We have won zero trophies between the two of us. We know a lot of people in our in our patrons that have won trophies. That have won a lot of trophies. Yeah, we've so given we out a few people. trophies in our time. Yeah. We've uh, contributed to other people's success in our, in our time yeah. by being absolutely smashed, but we haven't actually won. We haven't, no. Um, We've been beaten by trophy holders. Yes. So yeah. 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 We've even beaten the odd trophy holder. Yeah, we're mad. Yeah. Some trophies, and I, and I smashed into pieces, yeah. and I did cheat. And I did that. <laughs> uh, I didn't cheat, but uh, anyway, that's by the by. So we are playing the starter set war bands. So long time in. Hello, long time. For those of you who are completely new. Games Workshop do this slightly confusing thing of releasing some. They release a core set every six months, which is kind of like a, a reset of the world. And certainly every year they kind of change the rules a little bit. Yeah. You know, and then there's another release six months later where they don't change it too much. And then there'll be another new core set six months after that. And, and that'll be a, your Death Gorge and your Wintermore yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Might, they might change the setting or at least the location, even if it's not the, the whole setting. Um, but they also, so that, that goes on on a rolling six month basis, but they also, every now and again, pop up with a starter set and I think this the last one was last year 2023 sometime they brought out a starter set with these war bears the fast riders and the sepulchral guard sepulchral guard and they are actually reprints of a sets that they did in the very very first season of uh, six Underworld six or seven years ago yes yeah and um, and they re-release that every couple of years the, the most important thing I think to remember is that it doesn't matter which one you get because they're all they all work together. So if you get the starter box, then you go, ah, oh, a friend of mine's got Death Gorge. Can I play a game with him or whatever? Like, yes, you can. You absolutely can. I wouldn't necessarily say it doesn't matter which one you get. I, and I think if you if you buy the starter set and you want to play Underworlds for any length of time, you're going to have to buy one of the yes. others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. a couple of reasons. One is that um, this starter set, and you, we're, we, we won't be playing all the rules tonight because this starter set has a slightly cut down version of the rules. It doesn't have any magic. Um, and it doesn't have a scatter token, yep. which doesn't matter what that is. But the, this is really the basics. All the, all the block tokens, all the block he yeah. blocked hexes. Yeah. The um, okay, yeah, I hadn't noticed that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it does because it doesn't have the uh, scatter tokens. You're so. right. Um, yeah, so we will be playing a cut down set. Yes. So, so when you so if you do buy this one, it's the easiest way to learn the game. The, the war bands are very straightforward. Yeah. Um, but if you buy Wintermore or Death Gorge, which are two current core boxes. They are they're the full game and they have slightly more complicated rules. Yeah. The rules that are in the twenty twenty three starter set box are out of date. So it would be worth getting hold of the current rules, which are available I think on the Games Workshop website. If not, yep. they're definitely available on Underworld's D B, <coughs> which is a wonderful resource. I didn't know he had them on there. I okay. didn't realise he put them on there, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. So you can see the latest rule book. I mean, the, the very latest ones might not be up there yet because the winter more is only just yes dropped. So just yeah, but they are they're they're pretty much exactly the same yeah. death court modules definitely are on there yeah and they are they do, they do change the rules a little bit and there's i, I suspect that some of the changes around charge actions which you'll see later ha happened in between this box yeah and this yeah. this 2023 box and the current boxes so it's worth always checking what the current rules are um obviously if you're playing just at, um, at home it doesn't matter you can play yeah. with Play with the rule book out of the box, but if you want to go to a club and play with somebody, then say you're on the same page, you're going to have to make sure what you're yeah. saying rules. Yeah, but you've got the right rules. And we are going to be playing the rivals format. There are multiple formats. We've done a video on that. We should go check out if you're not familiar with them. But we're going to be playing what's called rivals, which means we've just got the war bands decks that we're going to be playing with this evening. Yes, um, and nothing else. So again, straight out of the box, we've just got the cards out, we've shuffled them, and we're ready to play. Yes, you've reminded me of something else there. But uh -huh. another another key difference between the starter set box and the six monthly core boxes is that this box doesn't have any right, yes. universal cards in it. Yeah. So you can only get cards which belong to your faction. So there's yeah. a deck of cards for the Fast Riders and a deck of cards for the Sepulchral Guard. In the other boxes, you get 
decks that go with the war bands that are found in those boxes and you get additional what are called universal rivals decks which you can pair with any any single war any war band from the game yeah um so that's another reason why they might be slightly better purchase it especially if you're going to play yeah more deeply than just this one-on-one -on -one game yeah. Now we are doing it completely beginner friendly tonight, so for anybody, Zoltan, John, anybody else who's watching who has played a lot of games, you might find this very basic because we're going to literally be talking about everything like the symbols on the dice and all that kind of stuff. For anybody out there who's watching this evening who has never even played the game or has just picked it up and wants to really work out how this game works. So if you do have any questions and you're watching live or if you're watching this after the fact, do stick them in the comments now, stick them in the stream, and we will answer as much as we can as we go along. Absolutely. And if you are a beginner and you're watching this later later on, later in life, uh, <laughs> then do feel free to ask questions. But also do let us know in the comments if there's anything you want to see a video on for the depth or other parts of the game that you're not sure about. Then yep. we'll, we'll see what we can do. We're always looking for ideas for content, and we want to try and up, up our content for beginners. Yep. So... Off so we, go. we have our war bands all set out. We've got our cards laid out with the un with the uninspired side face up, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got all our models put out. We have assembled and painted our models, but obviously you don't have to paint the models in this game. You can play with them just put together. You kind of do have to assemble them, yeah. You, can't you do really have to assemble them. Leave them on the sprue. You do. Work. So one of the first things you have to do once you've got your cards out, because we're playing rivals, we we just literally have got the cards out of the box and just shuffled them. You've got one deck which has all your blue cards, and these are your your power cards, your gambits, and your upgrades, which you shuffle all together. And you've got a guild pile, which is your objective cards, and there'll be 12 of those, and they're the things that get you your, your glory, your points to score. Yep, and your basic Underworlds deck, in fact, nearly every Underworlds deck, you get 10 upgrade and 10 gambits. Yep. And you, you have to have you have to have as many... Upgrades you as have to have as, Upgrades, as you, you have to have as many gambits as you have up now. Which way around is it? You, you have, have to have as many, at least as many upgrades, upgrades as gambits. As gambits. But you and can you must more. have at least... 20. 20 cards yeah and you can have more upgrades you can yeah. have 20 yeah you can have 12 upgrades and 10 but yeah but the, the gambits tend to be a little bit more powerful and obviously just as a general rule the, the slimmer your deck the more chance there is of the cards you want coming coming out yeah so the first thing we've got to do now we are all set up and ready is we've got to roll off uh, and this roll off is to determine who gets to pick who picks a board first so you take four cut four dice you can pick the white attack dice or the black defense dice it doesn't matter because what we're looking for is this symbol which is these crits these are exclamation marks they are called crits so if i roll four dice oh i've got two crits and these little things here are called single assists so i've got two crits and two singles oh, that's quite a good roll that is not a bad roll to start with robin has one crit and three hammers or three smash yeah three smash so the purposes of a roll off these Crits, are, these hammers are useless. The crits are useful, but Pete's got more than me, so he's one. Well, if we, if I had got two two crits, then Pete, these single assists come into play. Yeah. Pete would have still won because he had a single assist. So even if I had say one single assist, which I now can't find on the dice, um, Pete would still win because he's got two. Yeah. And the only other thing that comes in is if Pete rolled a double assist. Double assists aren't as good as single assists. So had I rolled the same as Pete did, actually roll roll two single assists. And this would win because Pete's got a double. You'd win there. because our two crits would cancel each other out, and your two singles would beat my one single. And they're called assists because that's where the game was sort of first created. You'll see when we do combat if you've got assists, it's assisting in the combat, and that's what these are referred to. But yep. I think, tend to think of them as single because they've got one arc on it. So do I. And double where it's got because it's got two arcs on it. Some people call it half moon and half, full moon. Yeah, and half, that half and a whole. But all I all I keep thinking of is Jaffa cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will um, let you. Uh, I, actually, I'll pick a board first. Pick a board for me. Pick a board. You don't actually have to sing that, but it does help. It does help the process. So I'm going to pick this board here. So now Robin can. You can turn this around if you want. Uh, you can't flip it over, but he can turn it around if you want. So now yes. he has to. His choice of boards. So if you have multiple sets each, then you can you can pick from yes. any of the boards you have. There's various. You get very, every time you buy a core box, you get more board, boards. You get more boards, and they, they they. We have about enough to build a house. We now. certainly could we'll pay, wallpaper a room with them. Um, you. You choose. So you, I choose a board from my collection. I've got my collection over here. Oh, you can't see it, but you. I've got my collection over here of boards. I could choose any one of those. These I think are the boards from the original star set which we're going to use today. Um, so. I see. I don't want to use this side because I have um, people who can shoot 
with my with their bows and um, these are blocks hexes these white hexes I don't want to choose this side. I'm going to choose this side and I can put it square on if I want to or I could if I was feeling spicy yeah I could you can put it end on like that yeah. um, as long as you you can't offset Sorry, no. you wanted me to move it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, you, you can't offset it when you when you. No, that's the only on. way you can put it like that. That's the only way you can put end on. That's called longboarding and is generally frowned upon. <laughs> it can, in certain tactical uh, situations, can be very useful. And what most people tend to do is they tend to offset for a little bit, a little bit just to on. just to make sure you're there either far away down here or sometimes to really line up and get. Yeah, more fighters closer. More fighters closer. So I'm going to offset them because my warmer is quite aggressive. I'm going to offset like that. You can offset it up to four hexes. Yeah. Here it used to be three, but now it's four hexes. So this is five here because it's yep. the number of hexes that are whole hexes that you yep. make. So that is the setup of the boards. So then we come on to placing objectives. Now we have got the um, uh, we've got a mixture of different <laughs> different game systems here. <laughs> I think they're all winter aren't they? Are they? Oh, okay. Yeah, they've all got the smiley faces on the back. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good point. So we have, uh, next thing up is to place our objectives. So you have four, five objectives, numbered one, two, three, four, five. I've actually got a lot more than five objectives. I've got loads everywhere. I've got the objectives Just coming out of my ears. Objectives here. <laughs> objectives, because they release the, they do a new set every release, <laughs> yeah, and you don't need them. Got objectives coming out of our ears. But for the purpose of this game, you have objectives numbered one, two, five. And because I picked the board first, Robin got to place them however he wanted, so I get to put the first objective down. So I'm going to put my first one here. Yeah. So this first, the, the first roll off and choosing the board is quite significant because yeah. it really depends on some some decks rely on being able to control these objectives during the game, and therefore you want to have more potentially more objectives in your half, which Pete will be able to do now. Yep. Because he's going to place three and I'm only going to place two. But I know that my war band's more interested in holding objectives yep. than... Well, Robbins does as well a little bit. and, and yeah. So, yep. But I know I want to do it a lot more. So uh, We have got 19 people on wow. now, so thank you all for joining us. If you do have questions, if you're brand new to the game and you think it's a stupid question, there are no stupid questions, so feel free to ask or we will answer it as we go. Um, and Robin... Uh, sorry, not Robin. If you are newer, or if you're a more long in the tooth player and you think oh they should be pointing out this yeah don't then, shout. Um, then shout now there are some rules when placing objectives you cannot put them on any edge hex any full hex that's on the edge of the board you cannot place it on yeah so, so that that's offsetting of these that, ones another effect of offsetting is it increases the number the more you offset it increases the number of edge hexes you yeah so you couldn't go around any of these ones. Yeah. None of these ones can it be placed on. You also can't put it on starter hexes, which are these ones with little symbols on. And if we had other hexes, that, like we don't have them, but blocked hexes and lethals, you can't put them on those. Yeah, hazard hexes, I think they're called. So yeah. there's a some of the game has gloom hexes, lethal hexes, and blocked hexes, which are stagger. Weird. Stagger hexes. Oh, stagger, sorry, not gloom. Not gloom. gloom. Gloom's an old mechanic. And another thing you can't do is you cannot place it within two hexes of another objective. So... We're all set up now, so we yep. can flip these over. So I've got one and three and five. Four and two. We've got DWES, DWs, Please recently retired team from Polish, uh, from a loyal Polish fan. Loyal. Loyal, ah, yes. A loyal Thank you Polish for joining fan. us. Fantastic. Unless he just really likes Polish. That's the uh, other you know, he could like Polish. That, yeah. is, that is always a thing. Classic but, uh, English amusement. Ho, ho, ho. So there we are. We are now set up on the boards, and now it comes to setting up our models. Before you do that, you draw your cards. Yes, which we normally forget. Go. Oh, we're meant to have drawn our cards. So you take three objective cards. Oh well, I've taken five up, right? And you take five power five cards. Five power cards. Five power. Three so five of the blue ones, and three of the gold ones. You look at them all, and once you've looked at them all, you then have to decide: Do I want to get rid of all of my gold ones? And or all of my blue ones. You can't get rid of some of them. You can't say, I liked two of these. I'm going to get rid of the third one. You have to get rid of all your objectives or none of them. And same with your power cards. You have to keep yeah. them all or get rid of them all. And you have to decide for both before you redraw. So Generally, something you want to look for is something in the game called surge cards. They're ones you score immediately so you can get glory quicker and draw more objectives. I amazingly have drawn three. So have I. Surge cards. <laughs> <laughs> How funny! That's that almost never happens. Almost never. So you've but, but you I, can, what I also have done is I've drawn four upgrades. Okay. I'm going to get rid of them because you don't want too many upgrades early in the game. It's worth mentioning that so the surge cards 
you can only have six surge objectives in your yeah. deck. So each deck that you buy now, in the new in the last three or four years, they all all the objective decks have six surge yeah. cards. And because surge cards are we you'll see as we play, but you can score surge cards pretty much at any time during the game. Yeah. Whereas the other type of card, which are called end phase cards, you can only score in the end phase. So a surge card is a, is a way of scoring glory quickly. And scoring glory is important because scoring glory not only enables you to win the game, but it also enables you to pay for upgrades for your fighters. So surge cards are really strong. And then once you have decided which ones you're going to keep and which ones you're going to get rid of, first we've got in. Surround 2002 says, woo, run the world, woo. Yeah, and don't forget, shout out with any questions you might have because we are doing a starter game, an intro game. So I'm going to get rid of all of my power cards. Uh, normally you tell your opponent, but I'm not going to because I don't like not being stuck. But normally you show your opponent what you're getting rid of. So they well, it's one of those things you are supposed to, but in every game I've played, even in the tournaments, I think everybody goes, nah, go away. Nah, that's fine. I'm either not going to remember or it doesn't really matter to me. So I've got rid of my five and I've drawn another five. And then what you do with the cards you, would, you discard is you shuffle them back into your deck. So you don't lose them. Uh, those of the older Underworlds players among us will remember that in the old days you used to get rid of them, that was it. So if you had 12 objective cards and you got rid of your first three, your potential for scoring was suddenly much lower, much more painful. Surge cards for objectives are so good that I didn't even look at what mine were. I just looked at the <laughs> fact that they were surge cards and thought, I'm yeah. keeping them. Yeah, I'm keeping mine. If you've got three, you've almost got to keep them, even if they're slightly subpar, because chances of you getting any, because obviously you're only 50% of your, because I, I don't know if I actually said this, you can only have six, I don't know if I said it or not, you only have six surge yes, cards, you do. and you can, have as many, you can have more than 12 power cards, but you can only have six surge cards, and surge cards you don't want to dilute it really. So people do, but m most people will just have 12 cards in their decks. Aud Surround says the audio was cutting out, but he never worked out it was him. Were you okay. sort of going like this? Uh, <laughs> do you also notice that sometimes it goes black? <laughs> and it comes back. Oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry. War Machine says he doesn't have a st chance of learning this game. I don't believe that for a second, War I Machine, don't know. because you, War Machine is one of our lovely patrons. And, um, and he plays Shadowpoint. And he plays, well, he plays about a million games. Yeah. So um, this is dead easy. T t uh, far more complicated than this game. So you totally, you totally can. So once you've picked your objectives and your power cards, it's time to roll off again. And the same rules uh, apply. So you roll four dice. This time I've only got a single and two doubles. Whoa. Not as good. Oh, I have got a crit single and a double. That would have been a good tutorial so, so, thing. We should have rolled that first time. Yeah, so even if you didn't have the crit, <laughs> yeah. you're, you, we both have one single, so yeah. that's a tie. But then I have two doubles, so you would beat, I would beat you. Yeah. But because you have the crit in there and I don't have any crits at all, you win. I win the roll off. So, so this, this roll off, we don't really understand what it's for, is to determine who places a model first. Yeah. And generally, you make your opponent place first because you get to see what they're up to. There is a slight wrinkle in that because the, the, the team that finishes setting up their models first gets a bonus crit in the next roll-off, which is to see who takes the first turn. Yep. Now, I've only got three models because you took, you place models alternately. So there's, this roll is almost entirely redundant almost in this game yeah, because I will finish placing first no matter what happens. In fact, Pete will have most of his models to play still to play by the time I put all mine down yep. um, but I will I will make you go first and uh, and and when we say whoever places their last whoever finishes placing one of their models first if we both had three models then it would literally be if Robin started placing first when he places his third model I haven't placed my third model yet so he's finished placing first it's not like no. oh we both finish placing at the same time because we've both had three or anything yeah. like that. so I am going to put uh, one of my little Rising petitioner there. Oh, he was referring to himself turning up late. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Right, uh, well, I can't remember what cards are in this deck, so I'm just going to place um, El Melic Eagle Eye here. So I'm going to put another petitioner here who's almost equally useless. <laughs> and I'm going to put a liar swift blade there. And my third almost completely useless petitioner there. And I'm going to put the boss Samson Fast Rider there. Right, so my last ones are going to put the Harvester over here, the Champion there, the Prince of Dust, 
and my warden. Now he's my leader, the warden, so I need to be careful with him. And your guy is Sansa and Fast Rider. Yes. And so there are leaders, and that might be relevant later on, but it might not equally. So, <laughs> cryptic devil, you. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I'm trying to just work all my cards on now. Oh, interesting. So Ooh, I, interesting. I've finished setting up first. You have. So now we've got to roll off again. But this time... Yeah, it can. <laughs> it definitely, yeah, it definitely does. It. In a lot of other situations, so Saran uh, said that he can see the initial placement here being redundant. It can give you a slight advantage seeing where the first two models play. It definitely can with other warbands as well, even when it's like four or five fighters. Yeah, that can really tell you where they're putting the majority of their stuff. You can kind of see where, if your if your opponent immediately, if you've got four or five fighters and he immediately sets back right off the bat, you think, well, okay, yeah. he's going to be sitting back, and I need to do what I want. If I need to attack him, then I need to be playing forwards. Yeah. Um, the game of cat and mouse begins yeah. straight away. And because I've got seven fighters, all of my starting hexes, if you have seven hexes on a board, um, all of mine are going to get filled regardless. So Robin knows there's always going to be someone on this front one here. Whereas if I was a three or a four fight war band, I might, be, I might set up right the back here or something. So, yeah. Right. So now we've got to roll off again. So in this situation, because you've been setting up first, you get a crit. I do. Already. So I've already got a crit. So if you don't get a crit, then I win it. Oh, but you so do. I have. I've got a crit and a double. So I need I need something with this roll. I'm gonna one crit and one double. So you already effectively got a crit. System. So as long as you get a single, you'll beat my double. A single or more. And I have oh. got a single and two doubles. So you have won that roll. And that okay. roll is to determine who goes first. Who goes first? Who's on second? Okay. So I think I'm going to go first. Yeah, I think, I'm gonna, <laughs> I think I'm gonna go first. So when we're looking at this, the one of the things you want to be considering is how do my fighters inspire? So we haven't really talked about the inspiration mechanic in this game. No, it's true. The every fighter has two sides to their card. They have the standard side, which is blue, more grey. Well, it might not be some some yeah, different well, it's, different it's games. It's one colour, uh, but the inspired side is I think it's always gold. Pretty much, it's always gold. So um, you're. Th and they're better when they inspire. So my fighter um, is better, just very simply, his, he's got a bolt storm pistol, which has a range of three. Which is definitely not a bolt gun. <laughs> when he inspires, he's got a range of four. So it's, you know, it's better. He gets the most more significant one, actually, is that he's got one shield for defense when he's uninspired, and when he is inspired, he's got two shields for defense. So you're looking at ways to... Um, you're looking at ways to inspire your fighters, almost certainly. I, I can't think of any warband where I don't care about inspiring my fighters. And I, I might. I might well, well, <laughs> I don't okay, really but, care about some but, but about I don't, I don't, but, I don't, yeah. but I don't play. Yes, that's no. true, actually. Your your inspiration mechanic is almost like a byproduct of doing what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I inspire mine whenever my warden does an action which brings one of them back, which we'll come on to. Yeah. But yes, um, and they don't get, not a lot of them get very much better. War Machine does ask, is it better to go first or second generally? And uh, Surround has answered it accurately by saying, it depends. Um, Robin probably wants to go first because he wants to start getting up in my grill early and kicking me into pieces. Yes. I probably want to go second because I want to be able to run onto objectives yes. late in the game. So after Robin has done whatever he's doing, I can jump onto an objective last. Yes. Then it all depends on... on so I was contemplating whether to let him go first. I want to make him go first because then he has to make, literally, the first move. Mm. Um, but my inspire condition is that I have to make a success successful attack action I've got two different types of attack action in my card. I've got a range one and a, and a not range one. Yeah. Um, and my inspire condition is that a fighter has to make both in a round. Yeah. It's possible that Pete could run away with this fighter here. Yeah. And then I can't shoot him <laughs> at all. And so then I find it very difficult to inspire my fighters if Pete decided to do that. So that's why I've decided to go first. I was tempted to try to lure him in because because one of the advantages is if if, if your fight if your enemy has to come towards you, once they've moved or charged, they can't move there. So they, we'll come yeah. on to that. But when you make a charge action, you can't do anything else. Yeah. So you you might do some damage early, but then you basically just have to stand there for the rest of the turn. The rest of the turn being hit over the head. Yeah. So it's your first go, Robin. Yeah, so I'm going to go first. I am going to use 
Elias Swiftblade to shoot. So that's this blue crew here? No, nope, it's that one. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry, blade. sorry, Sanson Fast Rider, sorry, Sanson, my, my okay, bad. So my Sanson's bad. gonna shoot at my champion. Yeah. So we can probably be quite clever here and put these in here to just show. Yeah, people. did you want to show off our card or not? Uh no. No, okay. I think I think we'll just play the game. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna use then. his bolt storm pistol attack action, which um, has got a range of three as you can see, it's one, two, three away. And it's got three swords, which means I have to roll three dice and swords are successes on the dice roll. Yeah. Um, if I do get if I get successfully through a hit, then it's one damage. But we'll come on to that in a second. So, yep. and my champion, he has just one dodge on yeah. his defense, so I only get to roll one dice, and I need a dodge on it. So already you can see that Robin's rolling more dice than me. Yeah, and he has a better chance of getting what he wants here. Uh, on the dice, you've got hammers, swords, and then the assist symbols and crits. Yeah, the crits are really good because they're a success, um, but they're they're also a critical success, so they override. Defense, uh, they are they are right. They over they override the opposite of the opponent's rolls that unless they're crits. crits. That yeah. aren't crits, yes. They're like auto wins basically. Yeah, and there are more hammers on the attack dice than, than swords. swords. So swords aren't as you've got less chance of rolling a sword when you have a hammer. And on the defense dice, there are more shields than dodges. Yeah. So, so generally speaking, dodges shields are better. Shields than, are better than dodges, and the hammers are better than swords. Yeah. So you got three dice. I have got three dice, so roll them. and I've got oh. two hammers and a single success, which so is not a single success in this case, not a no single support. Right. At all. But I am going to play a card. No. Reaction. Play this after a friendly fighter's range three attack action. This fighter makes a range three attack action that targets the same fighter. That's rapid volley. So normally I would roll my defense dice. Yes. Um, and I got a shield, so I didn't get anything either. But I didn't so get so that is, I that. That is cool. rapid volley that I am going to play. Yep. So this is what's called a reaction. And yes. reactions happen at certain stages. And generally they'll tell you at what point they happen. And this one happens after a friendly fighter's range three attack. Uh, they can make a range three attack again. Yeah. So I made the range I missed. It doesn't matter. This card doesn't matter whether I've missed or hit. It just says after the attack action, yep. I can do it again. So I'm going to try and do it again. Right. So you basically get to roll I'm dice. Do the same thing again. I'm going to roll three dice. With swords. And I'm going to get Ooh. two swords. Okay, so you've effectively scored two. I've got so two successes. I, I cannot roll more than one success on this dice, because no. only up on dice, unless I get a crit. So, no, no I get shield. a shield. Even if I'd rolled a dodge in this case, my one dodge does not beat Robin's two swords. Because two is better than one, two is bigger than one, and therefore Robin wins that attack. So he has made a successful attack action. So I now take a wound counter, it's one of these little red things here, and I put it on my champion card. You can just about see it there on the corner of the screen. He has three wounds. Let me show you that quickly. So you see this little red circle here. He has three in that circle, which means I can take three wounds, and once I've taken three, he is removed from the board. Yes. Now, it's worth mentioning, if when I roll my two swords, if Peter rolled a crit on his defence dice, he would have won. Yeah. Because a crit overrides, no matter if I had ridden, even I'd have had a five dice attack and I'd rolled five swords, a crit, one, a single crit overrides any number of ordinary You can, you can think of crits as thinking uh, as, as that they're worth a hundred successes. Yes. Is generally. I was going to say ten, but that's inflation for you. Yeah, there you go. Um, I also have now have the choice after you've successfully, or, or not, not even just successfully, but in a circumstance where you have a successful attack action, you can push the fighter back. So I can push the fighter back, so I can push him further away to one of these three hexes if I want to. It has to be further away, so it can't be here, no. because that's the same distance away. Yeah. Um, and. I will push you to there. Okay. I think. No, I'll leave you there. No. I'm going to leave you there. Okay. Right. So after your activation, we now go into what is called the power step. What have we got here? If you have a card in your hand that can help improve your attack, it is better to start second before you activate. There will be a power step. Yes, yeah. absolutely bang on. So yeah. it does depend somewhat on what the card you've got That's in your a hand. Really good point. Well. Ten that tends to come in more, I find. In the second round, yes, because that tends to be the difficult decision. Of, you kind of want to go first because, especially if you're playing an aggro warband, an aggressive warband, you want to start start the killing machine. But yep. you've got cards in your hand, which will make killing easier. Yep. 
Okay, so on to the power step after the activation. Yes. Uh, after Robin's activation, we then move on to what is called the power step, and that's where people can then decide if they want to play any of their power cards or play any of their upgrades. So, Robin, do you have anything you want to play? No. Okay. As it happened. So I don't either. So on to my first turn. So I've got the turn card. I'm going to flip it over. Now these don't come in the books. These are custom ones that we had yes. made. <laughs> um, so I'll flip over my number one. So it's my first turn. Oh, my turn. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, a ability by the warden. Now the warden, my boss, he has an ability where I can choose two other friendly fighters. And both of those fighters can make one move action. So out of all the actions they can do, there's attacks and charges and moves and go on guard. He allows two of my other fighters, so I can do two for one, and they can make a move action. Yes, the uh, survival guard um, was significantly more complicated than the fast riders. The fast riders basically don't have any special action. Run and punch people <laughs> in the face. Yeah. So I'm going to move the champion to there, because he only moves two, so he's going to go one, two to there. He's a little slow, he's got small legs. And I'm going to move the Prince of Dust. Uh, he's going to go... One, two to there. Okay, so he also has small legs. They're coming right for me. They're coming right for us. So that's power step. I've got no reactions to make, and I don't think you do either. If you do have reactions, you don't wait. You just have to say it straight away. Uh, don't wait for your opponent to invite you. And then in the power step, I have nothing that I want to do at this point. Okay, yeah, I've still got nothing. Um, Pete's giving me a bit of a dilemma. I don't mean to, it just I know, happened. I know. So for my second go, I'm going to use Elias Swiftblade to attack directly because he's adjacent. I've got an attack which is for adjacent fighters. Yep. Um, I'm going to use Elias Swiftblade using his Storm Saber. Saber! To attack you. Okay. So it's this guy against this guy now. Yep. So my champion is still one dodge. It's three swords, two damage. Okay. Oh dear. Oh, yeah. It would appear your men can't hit the broadside. No, oh, so I have missed. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Um, so, on to the power step. Do you have anything you want to do? Uh, I do not. Right, so on to my second go. And again, I'm going to use the Warden's ability. So I'm going to move two of my fighters, because... I can you can keep activating the same fighter more than once as long as they haven't got a charge counter, and my Sprog Warden hasn't got a charge counter because he hasn't charged. So I'm going to move some bodies again, so I can pick two fighters and make them make a move. So I'm going to move Prince of Dust to there again. So he's now got two move counters. And I'm going to move this guy back one onto this objective here. Okay. Um, right, and then in the power step, I'm going to use a card. I'm going to play No End to Our Duty. I can choose a friendly fighter with one or more move counters, and the chosen fighter makes one move action. So again, I have to pick a fighter who's got a move counter. I'm going to pick the champion, and he's going to trot around here and stand on there. And then after my after I've played a card in my power step, it then goes over to Robin. You alternate between you. Yeah, I'm so going to play Robin. Rangers Advance. Choose up to two friendly fighters and push each chosen fighter one hex. Okay. I'm going to push him to there. Uh, and him to there. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to have to pour on Prince of Dust in a minute. Uh, so it comes back to me again. And I have nothing else that I want to play. So I then power step pass. PSP. Now at this point, Robin can play another card if he wants. Mm -hmm. And then if I want to after that, I can then play a card if I choose. Um, and you keep going until both players consecutively say, I pass. So if I, I've said pass, if Robin now says pass, it will move on to his turn. I realise I made an error. Never mind. That happens a lot. Yes. Got excited. I should have done something else first. <laughs> Right, uh, so for my third activation, 
there are 20 people out there. And well. if you do have any questions, do shout or just let us know what you're enjoying about Underworld right I'm now if you're a long term player. I'm going to charge with Swift Blade. Oh dear. No, not Swift Blade. Again, Fast Rider. <laughs> Fast Rider. That this will time, inspire him. This time you're attacking the poor Prince I'm going to attack Dust. the Prince with his shock hand axe, which no, is it's two hammers, two damage. It's worth pointing out, he will inspire, but he doesn't inspire no, yet. Doesn't so inspire. we'll come on to that in a moment. So, two hammers, two damage. Okay. One hammer, Lord. no assists. And the Prince of Dust, he has a shield, because he's holding a shield. So I need to get a shield. No, I get nothing. So I get a single assist. Now, that doesn't help me, because I don't have any of my fighters assisting me. No. But Robin does. So that is how much damage? Two. Ew. So again, I take two of these wound counters and I put them on the prince's card. And now I've scored something. Uh -huh. uh, you do get to choose oh, I can push, push him push back first. I will push him uh, to there. Right, so after that we then have what's called the reaction step so if either of us have a reaction that comes off the back of that that oh, would kick in push him to death. Uh, what do you want to do robin no, i'm just trying to think sorry i'm trying to think i'm just trying to think just trying to think Stop yeah doing. i will i will i will yeah. Oh, 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 yeah he's there isn't he Yes. He may right. attack. So in fact, I'll push him to there. Okay. Uh, and again, that push has to be further away from the fight to make the attack. I'm, I'm still going to push him to there. So. Okay. Right. So after the activation, there is the reaction step. There are mm -hmm. no reactions to make here. After that is then the inspire step. So now your fighter becomes inspired. Yeah. So Samson Fast Rider becomes inspired. So he now is a little bit better, a little bit faster. And we've got these little bases. He's not fast though, but he's got better shields and he now got further range on his bolt, bolt, uh, bolts bolt, and bolt, talons bolt, bolt, attack. Bolt, bolt. Okay. Which has blinding. Which it's, plus it's actually one damage. different because it's not his, it's not his bolter anymore. It's no, the no, bird. no. Yeah, it's the bird. Well, it's bolt, uh, bolt and talons. That's kind of both. But yeah. it's the bird, yeah. So then after that is the surge step. And I have a surge card that oh. I've scored. <laughs> I have scored Undying Watchman. It's a surge and it's a duel. So it has two criteria. But it's a surge that scores immediately, and it says, score this immediately after an opponent's activation step. If your warband holds two or more objectives, and one or more of those is in enemy territory, which it is because I hold yes. this one yes, here I, and that one there. I could have stopped that. I have a card to move him, and I did not oh, play it. Dear. So I scored two. Two glory for that one. So now my score is two. There we go, you can see my score just appearing, just appear somewhere, bing, there we go. And now I have to draw a new objective card. So this is the card I've drawn. I don't know why I'm showing you that. But that's the card I've drawn. You draw it as soon as you've scored your card. Not as soon as you hit the criteria for it, but as soon as you actually score it. Um, I'm never going to score that. Um, <laughs> as is the way. So now it's on to the power step again. So Robin, do you have anything you want to play in the power step? I do not. Okie doke. Hmm. So what do I want to do? I have nothing I well do I? Do I maybe? Maybe do I do I? Maybe. No. I'm gonna put the ancient commander onto my sepulchral wool warden. I spend one of my glory. I don't lose it. I still have a score of two, but I have spent it. Uh, Ed says, we love Robin and Pete, best in Underworld YouTube universe. You are. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. We do love Ed. Thank you for joining us. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to play the Ancient Commander, which is an upgrade. So when you play an upgrade, it costs you one glory for every upgrade you play, and you have to put it on a fighter. In my case, this is also restricted, so it has to go on my leader. It can't go on anyone else. And it gives him an action, which it means... Instead of him moving or attacking, like he's been moving two fighters around, he can now move three fighters around. I need to make three people do a move action. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing with him. Yeah, I think it's worth just reiterating when you you, you get glory by scoring objectives or by killing things, nobody's yeah. killed anything yet, and you can spend it to put upgrades on your fighters to make them better. Yep. And it, Peter did already say it, it's worth reiterating if you spend it, it still counts at the end of the game yep. as, a, as, a, as a sort of positive score. So Pete has. Got two glory. 
Yeah, he spent one, but he's still two nil, two nil to beat. Two nil, <laughs> two nil. I do wonder sometimes if there should be some kind of factor in spent glory when when working again. But that's that's for a different video, not now. This is a beginner's <laughs> video. Um, so uh, anything for you in the power step then? Still no. And I also passed, so it's my third go, and I'm going to possibly predictably. Move everybody. So now I'm going to move everybody. Everybody. Because I've decided to cheat but not be subtle. Now I'm going to move everybody. I'm going to move him to there. That's the harvester. Now everyone moves two. So at the minute he's moved two to there, he's moved one to there. And I'm going to move. I'm just going to move him up to as well. There's a lot of movement tokens on the board. And then in the power step, I've got nothing else to play okay so I've got nothing okay so for my fourth and final round and then I'm gonna charge to there <coughs> charge to do actually put charge to put, put, put down a move counter by mistake I think these are the old move counters these they are the are. new move counters yes um, so I've charged with Swift blade. So it's three swords, two damage with single assists. Okay, so three swords. I know, two I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. I'm oh. using his bolt storm pistol. Oh, because he's already made a. Yeah, he's already made the storm. He's already made one oh, attack. Yeah, I need one damage on the pistol. That still, still three swords. Yeah, it's three swords, one damage, crit, and a single assist. So okay. the single assist here. So we should talk about that. Yep. Um, this fighter here, so this is the fighter making the attack, the green one. And this is the one getting walloped. And this is the one being walloped. Now, because this fighter is also standing next to this fighter, it can assist this one in hitting him. It's like yep. holding him down or something, um, or distracting him, making him put him face to the face. Face. Um, So the single assist counts, which is really quite useful because I think it makes that attack now unstoppable. In this situation, it does because you have one success and one crit, so you've effectively got a score of 101. Yeah. Uh, and I can only get at most, because my prince only has one dice, I can only get at most one 100 yeah. if I roll a crit. And you still built, beat me, so you win. I do. Oh. And I've scored something. Oh. So my hit, so that's one damage, and that's enough to kill my prince dice because he's now taken three wounds. Ha <laughs> ha! So he's now deed. And I get a glory for the kill. You do. The first blood to me, yeah. or first bone. To me, sure. I can't really say that. Can no, I? I don't think so. Um, so I'll put that there. First glory to me, or my, not my first glory, first kill. But I've also scored the judgment of Sigma. I score this immediately after a friendly fighter's ranged three attack action that takes the fighter target fighter out of action. Nice. Now it's worth noting that some of you will be thinking, well, he wasn't a ranged three attack action because it, he was standing right next to him. Yeah. There's a common mistake in Underworlds, but a the range of the attack is the range that's printed on the the card yeah so there are some things that only affect range one and two attack action and you can't put it on a range three attack action and still use it standing next to the fighter you could that is a range three attack action and it's always a range three attack action no matter how far you're actually using it yep. the only difference might be sometimes if it says makes an attack adjacent to a fighter yes in that case it doesn't matter what your range is you just have to be adjacent to and them. i've scored a veteran marksman scored this immediately after a friendly fighter's raised three attack action that resulted in a critical hit. Ooh. I finally got a crit. So there you go. So that, I scored two there, one each, two cards, one each. So I've actually got three glory now. Ooh. And um, I will draw two new objectives because I've scored those two. Um, I don't think I should. I, I'm not quite. Well, I've probably gone out of order there, actually. I can't remember. What, are the, what, are the, what steps should I have done? So uh, the expert, so you would you would score it. So you would say I've scored this objective yeah. as soon as you do that thing, but you don't score the actual. You don't surge, no, until after the inspire step. So right. he then inspires. Yes, now these he's made. The as you said, these bases were made for us. We don't you don't get those in the box. No, you don't. <laughs> so he then inspires, yeah. and then after the inspire step, you get the surge step, which is where you then score those two objectives, boom, boom, boom. and then you draw two new ones. Two new ones. Aha. Uh -huh. So Robin's now up to three, and I've lost a fighter, but that's not a big problem for me because I have seven fighters, so one one missing is, is not the biggest problem in the world. No. And you can bring them back. I can. So then we're on to the power step. So do you yes. have anything in the power step you want to do, Robin? I assume put some upgrades on people. Yes, I'm going to put some upgrades on people. 
So we're going to put. Um, I'm not sure we get it on the right one. I'm going to put covering fire, which is when an enemy fighter within three hexes of this fighter targets another friendly fighter. This fighter supports that friendly fighter. Well, so, so you I'm start to get single assist, even though you're yes, not. Yes, so I'm going to put that on our Merrick Eagle Eye. And that's this bloke at the back, yes, yes who's not inspired. No. You haven't flipped over the other way. Oh, yes, no, yes, I haven't. Actually, that's a good point about the inspiration. Because he's a bit weaker, so I'm going to put it on Swift Blade. Bloke at the front here. Bloke at the front. Okay. Uh, I power step pass. And I'm also going to put plus two move onto Swift Blade, make him swifter than Swift. Which it takes does. his move up to five. Oh, five. Yes, it's Swift Stride, plus two plus move. Plus two move. Yeah. Well, actually, he has a move of three, so he's now on five. Yeah. Nasty. Uh, I still have nothing. I still PSP. And I PSP also. All right, so it's on to my fourth and final go. And as said, I am going to bring for my my warden's going to do one of his ac other actions, which is he's going to bring a fighter back. I can choose a fringe fighter that's out of action, and I can place them onto a starting hex in my territory, and that will inspire the Prince of Dust. So no, he's no now, sleeves. So <laughs> no sleeves. Nice are, are you new sleeve. here? Are you new here, Fire nice Lord, or are you? Uh, sleeve. Have you? Um, are you just uh, trolling us? Sleeves. <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> sleeves are a rip off. We do. We I play more sleeves now. Actually, I've come more around sleeves, but no, we don't. I, as a general and in tournaments. Rule, as a general, I don't play with sleeves. We we yeah. Yeah, maybe we, that's we, why we we play, play, we've been playing away more often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell the wives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If uh, if I was at a club or a tournament, I'd yeah. sleeve my cards. But here. It's just me and Robin. There's, yeah. there's. I mean, there's tea, but that's about the only thing that yeah. might go splashing. And around. We barely, barely play with the. Certainly, I barely play with the fast drivers. It's not worth leaving them. I play this a lot. You play, play yeah, you do, you do use it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, he's inspired. He's been watching your videos. And he gets never got a lot of. Oh. But now you're here. Brilliant. Yay, hello. Welcome. Welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring that bell. And all those good things. <laughs> and if you're, you've got any questions about the games we're playing, it do let us know. Um, so my Prince Dust also gets a raise token as oh, well, well to say that he has been raised. Been raised. Um, yep. Yeah. So that is the power. That's the the activation. So the done. activation that you you raise a new fighter yep. who comes back inspired, and you also get a raise count. I do. Yes. Okay. And then to the power step again. Um, I've got nothing to do. Okay. The raise mechanic is so it's specific to the Spoggle Guard or an, an other undead warband. You don't tend to get them for anything else. And so the Oh, that's true. Do they get raise counters? No, they don't get race counts. Okay. Anything, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to play fearsome raw just because I can. Choose an enemy fighter adjacent to one or more friendly fighters and push the chosen fighter Ooh. with one hex. Get away! Boo! Get away! John says, speaking of tournaments, do you have one current? We do. We uh, do. Yeah. The eleventh. <laughs> Nicely done, John. Lovely segue there. Um, I don't know if there's a link in the description, but do check out an event bright if you're in the area. Uh, Surround says he contacts GW because a couple of the cards. His Zondara's graveyard warband were damaged, um, yeah, and the and the back, and he wasn't playing sleeve. Yeah, so quite often I found that situation. GW are great in that if you go to them legitimately and say I've got damaged cards or damaged models, they just send you another box. Mm -hmm. Just like you go, they normally be pretty good. So then you can sleeve them and then sell the other box. <laughs> Shh. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't, definitely don't do that. Um, right. I still power step pass. Okay, I, I'm literally all out of power cards. Okay. I'm powered down. No one likes people posting. Um, right, My power so, cards are massive. So now we're into what's called the end phase. So we're at the end of round one. Um, you get four activations each. We've yep. had all our four activations. So we're at the end of round one. So we're into the end phase. And at this point, the person who went first, which is Robin, he now goes through his cards. Now what he does is he says... Are there any end phase cards that I've scored? In which case, collect the glory for them and put them in your discard pile. Um, and then get rid of any objectives he does want to keep. And then he'll play any upgrades that he might want to play, get rid of any power cards he doesn't want to keep, and then he draws back up to three and five cards. So have you scored anything, Robin? No. <laughs> no, one of the problems of having lots of search cards is you don't score very anything in the end phase. Um, I... <sighs> going to get rid of without equal because it's a terrible terrible gut card for this matchup score this in end phase if two or more enemy fighters are out of action and your warband holds one or more objectives it's very hard to kill 
two, so because it's not just kill two survival guide, it's you've got to stay dead. You've got to stay dead. Yeah, for a minute. I have none. Yeah, so I've killed one, and it, but it's popped back up again. So it yeah. doesn't count. So go keep these two because they may or may not be search cards. So I'll draw a new one, and then I'll draw five, five new power cards. Oh, I have realised I haven't turned over my glory that I spent. Ah, you cheating bastard! Right, so I am. I have not scored anything. I'm going to get rid of. Or oh, do I get rid of? Hmm, should I get rid you think of? It's important the order there. You can't get object get objectives or power cards before you decide to drop them. Correct. Yes, yes right. you have to get rid of all, yes. or you have to score, score objectives, discard objectives, put on upgrades, discard power cards, and then draw everything. Because yes. that because what you draw may impact your decisions. Do you draw your objectives? No. You have to do, do it all before you draw. Okay. Because you might draw the objectives and look at yeah, them. I'm go, not sure. Oh, actually, I'm I not might be wrong. But I'm not sure that's what you just said. Yeah, there was. Okay, fair enough. I thought you said you score objectives, draw objectives. No, discard do... objectives. Uh, discard, okay, sorry. That's, that's... Score, discard, upgrade, discard, draw, draw everything. Draw. Well, yeah, once you've drawn, you can do nothing yeah. else. Yeah. And also, and it's it's not a big thing, but if you if you're, if it's your opponent's turn, they go, I've scored this, and I'm going to get rid of this. That's not your invitation. They go, oh, I've scored these things. Wait your turn, right? Wait your turn. <laughs> we never do that. No, we don't. We do sometimes. Because <laughs> you're just so excited, especially if you've scored like yeah, five yeah. glory. I've scored everything. Yeah. Shut up, it's my turn still. It's just a, a small note, which is what I thought you were going to say, but didn't say. Is sometimes, it's not very often, but sometimes you've got cards where the, your objective is, is do this if you've scored more more objectives than your opponent. Yeah. And then the order in which you, that would determine what yes. order you do things in, what order yeah. do you want to go in. Because if you're, the person who went first scores first. So you, yep. if you've got one of those cards, you want to go first. So you score those, and then you've you've got much more chance of being ahead of your opponent at, the end yeah. at that point. And and it doesn't. To be honest, it doesn't matter whether you do your upgrades and power cards or your objectives first. As long as you sort everything out before yeah. you redraw, it doesn't really matter. So you tend to do your objectives first because you get the glory which you can spend, yeah. especially in the early stages of the game. Yes, definitely. You get the glory to spend the upgrades. Um, I I don't know what I want to do now. He doesn't know what to, to do, do with himself. himself. What did I actually draw? I'm going to get rid of Skills Unforgotten, because that's kill someone with my Sepulchral Warden, and I just it never works for me. And I, because of that, I'm going to get rid of a Change Unanswered, which is have more enemy fighters out of action than friendly fighters. Because although there's not many of you, you're rock hard, and it's much harder for my guys to, because they hit like wet sponges. Rock hard. Rock hard. I'm going to keep that objective and then onto my power cards. I'm going to get rid of that upgrade, which is uh, an upgrade for my warden, which enables him to raise two people from the dead. I'm going to keep my other two power cards. So I'm going to draw two objectives and three more power cards. So it's important to remember that you don't just draw five. You draw as many as you need to get you up to three objectives and five power cards again. So that's the end of round one. That went quite fast, really. So on to round two. So again, you have a chance to sit there and look at all your cards and go, eh. Um, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. And take the counters off. I realise yep. we didn't go through what the difference between the actions are. Do we need to do that? I, I think if people have questions, we can answer them. But I think we'll just play the game. And if we've got time at the end, we can maybe go through yeah. what all those okay. are. Um, but I think sometimes it's easier just to play the game so people can see it. And if you do have questions and you are watching, do feel free to ask any of them now and we will answer as many as we can. Yes, just I'm still going to override you slightly there. But just as a general point, if you make a charge action, you don't generally, generally can't do much else with that fighter for yeah. the rest of the turn. Yeah. If you make a move action, you can still do more moves or more attacks. Yeah. Final says the other day they accidentally played a game wrong where they would refill their power cards after the power step. That would be amazing. <laughs> Just more power cards, more doing, everything. Ah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I like that. Right, what am I doing? What, what am I doing? What are you doing? I don't know what I do either. Uh, I'm not going to score that. I know, I've got some terrible cards myself. Like, what is this rubbish? I suppose I might score it. Well, I absolutely have to go after your... Something or other. Oh dear. Should have kept that other card, I'm telling you. Right, so. Never like it when your opponent starts counting the back of your ball. I just realised Swift make a move fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't like it. So, it's time to roll off for round two. So, again, it's like the other roll offs. You roll four dice. So, here are mine. Oh, it's 
single and a double. So not a lot, but you've got to roll a crit to beat me outright. And okay. there's a crit. Crit and a single. So you have more crits than me, so you win. So it's over to you. Do you want to go first or second? Oh, aye, 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 aye. Generally at this point in the game, it's about a 75% chance at least that your opponent's going to go first. Second round, nearly always whoever wins that roll wants to go first because everybody starts to get into position. Not always. Yeah, it's a bit often. different in this situation because you're kind of on objectives already. Yeah. <laughs> so there's... And you might attack me, but I'm quite a lot stronger than you. And if you if you if you charge me, then I'm then can spend some time punching you in the face. Yeah. So I think I'm actually going to let you go first. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Righty. So my first turn. So what I'm going to do now. <laughs> uh, bugger. Okay, um, right, so I'm going to use my Warden's ability to shifty shifty three people. So I don't know if I'm actually going to do three, it's up to three. So I'm going to go one, two with him, one with him, and I think one, two with the champion. So they all moved two, and they've all moved two, and they've all moved hurrah. And then in the power step, I am going to put. A familiar face, which is an upgrade, onto this petitioner here, who is the, we all know him as the um, dramatic pose, but he is the zealous petitioner. And the familiar face costs me one glory, and it means the bounty for this fighter is spent glory. So if you kill him, you'll get a glory, but it's spent already. Over to you. I'm assuming we're doing an amazing job of explaining this. I'm going this to put go, the Watcher of Advance onto Swiftblade. What's that do? So, reaction. After this fighter's activation, in which this fighter made one or more move actions, which that would include a charge action, because a charge action is a move action followed by an attack action, yep. uh, give this fighter one guard token. Okay. Back to me. And I think... I... I don't think I have anything else I want to do at the moment. Okay, I am also going to play Lightning Blow. Plus one damage to the first attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation step. Plus one damage from that? Yep. Okay. So we'll come to that in a moment, but Robin's damage goes up by one. Um, I have nothing I want to do. Me either. All right, so on to your first go. Uh, because this is a f fun game, I'm going to charge with Swift Blade. Boom. One, two, three, four, to there. It's not a fun game, though. <laughs> so I'm it's, not having fun. I've got plus one damage, so it's, I'm going to use his Storm Snare. Storm Snare. Which is uh, three swords, and because I've got plus one damage, three damage Ow. with Cleave. Ow, that's not very nice. So Cleave is a keyword on the attack, and it means that Shields don't count in defence roles. Yeah, that's not a success. And unfortunately, that's also what I need. Yeah. So I'm so in a lot of trouble. Three swords, three damage. Oh, I've got a crit. One, just the one crit, though. So I need a crit. And if I get a crit, then it's a tie. No. Oh, crit. So three damage, is that? Three damage. And then I'm yeah. going to play Merciless Assault. Play this after a friendly fighter's successful range one attack action. That fighter makes a range three attack action. Oh, God. So it's bolt storm pistol attack. I get crit. I got stagger. Yep. I got a crit. And that's all nothing you else. So I need a crit still. No. Oh. Oh, so that's one damage. I've killed the warden. Oh, it's game over. Right. It's not game over. That's not the end of the game. <laughs> it's not looking good for me. So you get glory for a, for the kill. Yes. Did you score anything? Yes. Yeah, score this immediately after master of the hunt. Score this immediately after a. Friendly fighter's attack action, if that was the second or subsequent successful attack action made by the fighter of the same fate, and two or more of those attack actions had different range characteristics. Which you did, because you made the range one attack yeah. and then you played the card to make the other attack. Git. It was a gamble worth gambling on. I've got a new card. I actually technically don't score that yet, because I've got the... So with my yes, you do score I that. I do, because there's no yes. inspire step, because yeah, he is no, inspired. No, no reaction for inspire. Yeah. Okay. Do I, don't, don't you get all mardy? Sorry, it's, these, the t it's funny the objectives. Um, obviously, the game is designed around 
playing other war bands. Yeah. But for this starter set, there's an awful lot of kill quite a lot of skeletons. Yeah. Which I suppose now I might score. Yeah, you could you, actually score you very can't easily. Bring them now, back yeah. Now, yeah, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to get rid of a card because it's only uh, so in the power step. Uh, sorry. Sorry, I also forgot that he had a reaction at the end of the move and got a guard attack. Yes, which should happen before the objective. It should happen before the attack. <laughs> I think it's after a move. Oh, oh no, yes. it's after the activation. No, it is after an activation. So it should okay. have happened. It should have happened after, yeah, after the attack and before all the, all the inspiration and stuff. Final says, I hope you have some of those cards that let your revise go without. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we're into the past. Do you have anything you want to play? Um, no. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to put Lone Warrior onto Fart Strider, which is rolls of single successes are, sorry, rolls of support, single supports are successes in his defence rolls. Right. So that's another glory spent. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going to get rid of, so one of the other things you can do, if you haven't got a card you want to play, if you have cards in your hand that you can't now use because they're for leaders only, or they're for particular fighters that are dead, you can then get rid of them. I can I can never remember the word for it. Um, salvage. Salvage. I was going to say forage. You can salvage them. So you get rid of that and you draw a new card. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's over to you. Uh, I have nothing. Okay. And then I have nothing also, I think. I think, I think, I think. Hmm. Uh, no, I'm going to play Terrifying Screams. Ah. Choose a fighter within two hexes of one or more friendly fighters and push the chosen fighter one hex. So it doesn't make a lot of sense because I'm going to pick him mm -hmm. and I'm going to push him onto there. It makes some sense because you can attack without charging. But it doesn't make sense that it's Terrifying Scream when you run oh, towards I see. me. I see. Yes, Less sense there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so then it's over to you again if you've got anything in the power step. Okay. Uh, Final says you can also delve on objective hexes, but he hasn't found a use for that yet. Yes, uh, yes you can. That's another thing you can do. So instead of playing a card, you could flip one of these tokens over uh, onto the other side. Generally, unless you know you're up against someone who's going to be grabbing lots of objectives, there's generally not much use for that. And then flipping them over, you may actually help your opponent score other cards. So and you stagger you yourself as well. Yes. So yeah. you get a stagger token. We haven't done stagger. Stagger token is basically if your fighter is staggered then you can re-roll other, your other attacks against that fighter. Can have a, you can re-roll a dice roll. Yeah. So there's a different risk to doing it. But like Pete says, sometimes you've got objectives. Like if you've got a card that says hold all the objectives, sometimes you can flip them and then it yeah. makes it a bit easier because then you can move on to the next one. And you, you, that one isn't an objective exactly. anymore. There's, because there's, these are only objectives when they're this side up, when they're that way up. They're not an objective anymore. They're, yeah. a, they're always a feature token, but they're not always an objective. Yeah. And if you've got them all flipped and there's just one, if you've got uh, just one face up and you've got a card that says hold all the objectives, you've scored it just by holding that one objective. Yeah. So um, so I've got nothing else. So on to my second go. Uh, and I'm going to attach. Uh, I'm going to attach him okay. with... Uh, I'm going to take him with my petitioner. Okay. So he's a bit rubbish. It's just two swords and one damage against your guy. So two swords, but I do get a single assist because the champion is right there as well. Two, two swords. swords. So I need a crit. Yep, because you've only got one defense die. No. So that's mm. one damage. <sighs> and then I'm going to play a card. I'm going to play a reaction. I'm going to play ceaseless attacks. Play this after an activation step in which a friendly fighter made one or more attack actions. Choose another friendly fighter and chose a fighter makes one attack action. Okay. So now my champion's going to attack you. Perfect. Now I've got a reaction <coughs> as well, which is play our friend and attack action. Okay, and what's that? Uh, but I don't know when I can play it. Do you resolve that first? It depends on what you are attacking. Play this after an enemy fighter's attack action that dealt damage to a friendly fighter. Right. That friendly fighter makes one attack action. It must target the attacker. Uh, no, I, well... You can't play them at the same time because I'm going to make an attack. Oh, but right, you, you're yeah. making the so attack if I'm still afterwards. alive, I can do it. Yes, yeah. and you will be. <coughs> okay. Uh, John says, taking out of action, is kill removed from the board. Yes, it does. So Northam says, evening, long time. Hey, see. Sterling, hello. hello. Sterling. In a spin. Hello, in a spin. So if a model is taken out, 
and it's raised back, it doesn't count towards models taken out Correct. for certain objectives. For, for certain objectives, yes. Um, <clears throat> usually they're end phase, and it will be there are three models out of action. So if you've had three models taken out of action and one of them's been raised back, only two models are now out of action. Yeah. So it can depend on the card. I've got a card in here which says if you've taken two out of action, and that if I kill another one, even if you brought one back, I would score that. Yeah, because you have taken, taken two out of action. Out of action. But if I, if I have to have two fighters out of action and you've and I don't kill them simultaneously, well not simultaneously, if I don't kill them before you raise one, yeah. then I can't score it. Exactly. It's a very subtle difference in the yeah. wording. It's a bit, bit of a fiddly one there, but thank you for the question. Do share if you get any more. So my champion's attacking you. He rolls two hammers and does two damage. And he has single assists because the bloke's staying next to him. And I okay. also have cleave. So, okay. so I actually haven't played that yet. No. Two hammers. So I need a crit again. Again, yes. Which you no, needed anyway. Yes, because of the yeah, yeah, cleavage. So that's enough to have cleavage. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so that's another two damage. You're up to three, three. damage. Well, I am now going to use that card. Yeah. But I can push it. Ah, okay. But it's after, after, after the... Uh, that's interesting. What yes. does it say? Um, yeah, you can push me. Yeah, so I can push to yeah. there. Okay. I mean, you will be I'm able to shoot me. I'm still going to use it because yeah. I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> three swords, one damage, but with stagger. And... Um, I've got a single assist. So he has to shoot the guy who attacked him? Yeah. Okay, so you're shooting the champion. Oh, one single assist. One single assist. So you get the single assist because he's standing next to the bloke being attacked. Yes. Um, that's the only time you can get the assist. So that was one success, and the champion rolls one dodge dice. I got oh, a crit. Oh, you git. So I headbutt it. <laughs> with right, his helmet. I can't really complain. I Bounced off my helmet. <laughs> oh, right. So... That's my activation done. That was the reaction step done. Then we're on to the inspire step. No one's inspired. Uh, and then we're on to the surge step. No surge is scored. Boo. Um, and then we're on to the power step. And I've got nothing I want to play. Me either. All right, so it's on to your second year. Okay, I think I'm just going to use Fast Rider here. Do I want to do that? I've only got one wound. So inspiring him seems a bit pointless. Around us, point out there is another warband in a Thane Soul Raid where one of the fires can voluntarily be out of action without being taken out of action. Oh, yeah, that's a yes. slightly unusual, but it doesn't very edge casey. And there, are, there is also um, Scabix because the little ratty thing yeah. doesn't get taken out of action but is out of action. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a bit fiddly. Yeah, there Somewhere are once you more. start playing with the other warband, it does start to get very fiddly. Uh, DWS uh, or DWs, I'm not DWS says, what is the difference between calling an action successful and succeed? Does this mean the same thing? Yes, basically. So, so, thing, yeah. so if your attack action was successful, then you succeeded in attacking, uh, which means you rolled more successes than your opponents. Worth noting, if you roll the same number of successes as your opponents, uh, you do not succeed. It is not successful. So I'm going to attack with my second, with um, attack with fast rider attack there. The champignon. champignon. The champion, yeah. <coughs> so it's three hammers, two damage. Ow. A crit. One crit. So again, if I roll a crit, I can stop this. Oh, no. No, so two damage. And he's dead. So that's another glory I for you. I mean, I've scored something. Ooh. Score this immediately after your warband takes a second or subsequent enemy fighter out of action in the same phase. So if that's what I was saying. If Pete had resurrected one, I still would have scored that. Yeah. Would have been the second that is the one second one taken, out, taken of action. out of action. So that's another glory. You would even score that if you killed someone and I brought them back and yeah. you killed them again. That's true. If I killed the same person, yes. Twice. 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 Wish money penny. Right. So reaction step, there isn't anything. Inspire step, there isn't anything. Surge step, there isn't. Well, we just did the surge step, didn't we? Um, then we're on to the power step. Power step. You got anything? Sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out if I can score any of these objectives I've got in my head. I'm going to play the Restless Dead. Choose a friendly Ooh. fighter other than the Spock Reward that is out of action, and I can place them back in a empty starting hex in my territory and give no. them a raise counter. Oh, and the champion's going to appear again. Oh dear. <laughs> and he's yeah, now Merrick's inspired. Like, really? Really? <laughs> just die. 
Chapman's like, technically, I'd already died before that, too. <laughs> I've been dead a while. They've been dead for some time, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> and I score something. Oh. I score they keep coming back. Score immediately after you give a friendly fighter a race counter and one or more friendly fighters each have one or more race counters. So my prince and now my champion both have race counters. So I get a much needed glory. So I get a glory and I draw a new card. Oh, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible card to get at this stage in the game. <laughs> it just has to do with the warden. No, but that's, yeah, still bad. Still bad. Uh, right. Anything for you in the power step? Uh, I'm going to go with no. I've got no power card, so I won't be doing anything in the power step for the rest okay. of this turn. Right, so my third turn, as the champion has just appeared here, he's going to swack, swack him in the face. So now he is resurrected, he rolls three hammers. Our merit and he does impressed. two damage, but you only have one wound left. One wound left. And I have cleave. Okay, so it's not looking good. Unless you do that. <laughs> oh, Peter. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. So that was nothing. I didn't get any successes or anything. <sighs> uh... So I've got, that's it, that's, that means nothing. I've got nothing in the power step, I've got nothing anywhere else, and nothing, nothing, nothing. All bags and nothing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so your third go. My third. I'm going to think I'm going to charge with hand at speed from here. One, two, attacking this guy. Yeah, I think so. I know. You will you, get, I know, yeah. I've be got, I haven't got any power cards, and I've got three unspent glory, so yeah, I yeah. think it's... It's worth it. So it's two hammers, two damage. Mm -hmm. One hammer. One hammer. And he just rolls the one shield. Which I get. So I will push him to there, I guess. Get your way. Okay. And I've charged there. Hokey cokey. And anything in your power step? Oh, we just missed that no. bit. He's been shoved back. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this? Uh, Who's that? Yeah. Mr. Petitioner. Okay, there's a petitioner. Right? Just a petitioner. Okay. No one special. Hmm. Okay, so my last go, my fourth and final activation. I'm going to charge with the champion. He's going to go one, two, three to here. He moves three now. Being dead a little while, speed you up, evidently. And he's gonna slap a you in the face. Slap me in the face. Three swords, no, he's up, three, three hammers, and two damage and cleave and all that good stuff. I could just do with rolling some stuff. Two hammers. So I need a crit. Yes. No, I hate you more than I can express it. Oh, I've just words. realized that he's actually inspired. <laughs> sorry, because I, I, he has, he rolled two. He's made a second sorry, so I could have rolled another dice. Oh, crit shield. Shut up. <laughs> right. Um, this is how it normally goes. says, I love that the skellies have their defence dice aligned with their models. Yeah, I, they didn't used to. And at some point, somebody at GW actually, I think, said, it's quite stupid that a man with a shield doesn't roll shields for yeah, defence. And they went, eh, I suppose. So they changed that. Blue Braden 12 says, where'd you get those inspire bases? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a guy who, who did it for us, and and we keep trying to tell him to make more of them. Um, so if we ever do manage to get that to happen... Yeah. I think you can find we'll them on Finiverse, I think, now. Somebody else has made them, Yes, I think. Um, but yes, somebody made them for us. Yeah. Right. right. Your fourth go. Make it quick. Okay. I've got places to be now. All right. <laughs> Um, I'm going to charge with Swift Blade. One, two, three, four to there. <laughs> it's not Swift Blade, it's Sparse Driver. Oh, no. He's actually going to shoot the petitioner here. This poor little blokey yeah. on the objective. So, so he's moved sorry, from all the way to here and he's shooting at this bloke. He's here. going to use his bolts and talons. Pew, pew, pew. So it's three swords for one damage, one a crit. It's got blinding, which is plus one damage, and stagger. Blah, 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 uh, blah, blah. But you've got second assists. Oh, yeah. That's a crit. 
Two crits. Ooh, cheeky dicks. Every game, <laughs> he rolls a double crit on something. Sorry. And know the odds on that we're rolling enough double dice rolls that at some point there's going to be a double crit. But it's always him. Shut your face. Right. I think I missed one somewhere, so you're up to eight now. Oh, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Okay. Right. Anything in your power slip after that? Uh, no. Right. On to the end phase. And I went first this time. So I have you? I have scored lay claim to it all, which is I hold more objectives than each other warband. So I've got two and you've got none. So I get a glory for that one at least. So that's something. I am going to get rid of Battle Without End because that's a score immediately after I put a raise counter on someone. I can't do that. I'm going to put the Legacy of Dust onto the Warden and that gives plus one damage to range one attacks made by petitioners. Yes, it's a Warden one. Uh, not Warden, the, onto the Prince. <laughs> Onto the prince. It's a prince. You can put it on the warden if you it's like. A, it's a prince or a dust upgrade. Oh, I see. Prince of dust or a warden upgrade. So <laughs> I'm going to put dust. on him. Sorry. Um, uh, I don't like any of what I've got left here, frankly. I don't like you. I don't like the crits you keep rolling. Oh, sorry about that. Like you, don't, you haven't crit counted tonight, but I, I have done a lot. Yes. Did you have? Right. I'm going to keep that one, and I'm probably going to regret it, and then I'm going to draw two objectives and five power cards. Do your worst. One, two, three, four. Okay, I have scored Bolts of Azir, because your leader is out of action. I haven't scored anything else. Me, 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 me. I'm going to keep those two. So Alan says, how oh, funny would it be left. to purchase a duplicate set of a warband and spray the duplicate gold in the spot? Yeah, you, I, I mean... Yeah, I've seen have people who did not spray them gold, but I have seen people who paint them in more inspirational poses. Yeah, yeah. That would look quite cool if you can be bothered to do that. And if you're not playing lots of warbands, then yeah, I think that's a perfectly valid thing to do. I am going to... Can I keep that one? I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> And five power cards because I'm greedy. <sighs> right. Right then. Right, said Fred. I just realised the Raptor Strike card. Not that, I've just, not that I've just picked that up or anything, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to have the leader alive. Hmm? Oh no, it does have to have the leader, right? <laughs> it's funny, it's not restricted. But it has to be within four X's of a friendly leader. So. Hmm. Right. Right then. This isn't going to go well. Right, it's time for the third round and we have to do our roll loss again. So I get a crit and a double. Oh. Two singles. Not no, for no crittle. Uh, I am going to go first. For the third time of asking. Yes. Fourth time of asking. I think it might be third, fourth, sixth, fifth. Seventh. I don't know how many times I've asked. Are you going to try and kill? Yes. Although, I don't actually know. I don't actually know if it matters now. Uh, I just can't remember if I got rid of the card. I mean, I will. I'm going to charge. And I might regret <laughs> it. But I'm going to charge there. So a charge, well, I don't think we ever said it, but a charge is a move followed by an attack. So he can move up to three, um, so he's just going to move one, and then he makes an attack, and after that he can't be activated again. MATB says, any Discord community you recommend for newbies? There is the Underworlds, there is an Underworlds uh, Discord, and uh, they are quite friendly over there, so they I are. would recommend yeah. that. Uh, and if you ever want to support us on Patreon, you do get access to our Discord, which is lovely, but you, you, do, have to, you do have to sub to our channel, so... yeah. <laughs> that is only you know a couple of quid a month. It is only a couple of quid a month. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll know. Right, so here we go. But These. you can always ask, find us on Facebook and ask questions. Yep, yep. We're or always on, on there. The or YouTube's. any of the YouTubes. Do yeah. do please give us show with any questions you might have, and we're usually pretty quick to respond as well. Right, come on and kill Eagle, please. Right, I would very much like to. So three hammers once more, and two damage. 
One crit and one hammer. So I need a double crit. Double crit. Now I have a previous on this, but I can surely not today. Oh, absolutely Good. no crit. <laughs> Good. I would have been very mild if you'd have rolled think, a double crit I, again. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> so I score glory honest. for killing yous. But I don't, that's a, that's a turn counter. So I scored a glory for killing yous, but I don't get anything else. So, power step. I'm going to play worthless chaff. Friendly petitioners have no bounty. Ooh. And this, this persists, this effect persists until the end of the round or until a friendly petitioner is taken out of action. So I'm going to leave that card there. Okay. So basically, if you kill any of my petitioners, the first one you kill is not going to get you any points. And points make prizes. Yeah. So that's back over to you in the power step. I'm going to put the crackling blade onto mm -hmm. Fart Strider. Okay. Which is um, basically gives him Grievous and Stagger. Okay. I'm going to play. It's interesting. This fight. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm going to play the Pitiless Command. Choose a friendly fight with one or more raised counters and push them two hexes. Mm -hmm. So both my champion and my uh, prince have those, so I'm going to push the prince to there. Okay. One, two. Um, back to you. Um, one, two, Barney McGrew. Cast a bit of Oh, this isn't good. It's not good at all. I am going to put Farsighted onto Swiftblade. It gives him plus one range. Which range. He has to wear particular glasses. Oh, no, I should go put on Fast Rider because it's plus one range with range three plus attack action, which gives his range th three plus uh, five, range of five. Is range three a range of five? Is range three plus attack action. Well, it's, a, it's normally four. It's a three plus attack action. Yeah. It, makes it, it takes it up to five. So it hits four yeah. and it goes to five. Yeah. It's not a three that goes up to five. No. Um, sorry, I'm actually going to put on Swiftblade. <laughs> and take, and take him up to four. Right. Uh, I'm going to put no vitals onto the harvester, which is minus one damage from attacks that don't have cleave or knockback, which you probably have both of, but just in case. So that's on this guy here. Uh, on oh, this one. Yeah. What was that minus? Minus one damage to attacks that don't have attack or not uh, that don't have cleave or knockback. Is it minus one to a minimum of one? Yeah. Okay. Well, the fast one doesn't have cleave. That's annoying. Anything for you? I'm going to put the overcharged bolt storm pistol onto um, the swift blade as well, which is basically it's a three hammer, three damage attack Ouch. with cleave. I'm going to put the spark of independence, which is another upgrade onto this little crawly out the ground petitioner over here. He gives him plus one wounds and plus one dice to his, his attack actions, and he cannot be driven back. So he's now got three wounds. Nice. And then, so to you, I've got no other cards left, so it's, it's up to you to do as and when you want. Okay, I'm going to do nothing else. Okay. So I'm going to charge with Swift Blade onto there. Okay. This is objective, pew pew pewing. So it's three hammers. Oh, this one. Okay, to me harvester. Yeah. One Ooh, hammer. Didn't show that. I'm sorry, one hammer. One hammer. So you needed hammers. I needed hammers. Okay. I switched I switched to need hammers. Okay, so Rum. the harvester just has one dodge. Oh, and I crit it. You did. So, so you nothing. fail. Yeah. You don't you don't can't even push me back, I'll no. tell. Okay. okay. Anything in your power step? No. Okay. Nothing for me in my past step five. So my second go, I'm gonna move one two with my Prince of Dust. So it's just a move. Okay. And then that's it. I have nothing in my power step. Okay. So for my second go, I'm gonna attack here with. Yep. Fast rider, so it's three hammers, two damage. Okay, I get crits, three damage, but it's minus one damage, isn't it? Yes, okay, so I need, really need a crit. So you do not get two hammers, two hammers, so so it'll only be one damage if you don't get 
if I don't get well, I need a crit again, yeah, basically, because yeah. yeah. you rolled two successes. No. So one damage. One damage. Yeah. Are you moving him? No. Pushing him back? No. Right. That has cost you because I have scored something. Oh, no. Because you have done that, I have scored Land of the Dead. Score immediately after an opponent's activation step if your warband holds two or more objectives and the total value is six or greater. Oh, I should I have pushed him there. I forgot you could do, that, could do that sort of thing. So I've got a glory. Never mind. So score a glory. Um, then, so I'm up to six. And I've got to draw another card. <laughs> ho 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 right um, power step you got anything no alright um, okay. it's over to you uh, it's my third go then mm -hmm. isn't it now? Yeah, so my third it. activation I'm just going to move him to there so he's the one that doesn't give you bounty well none of them give me bounty no. actually right now yeah. you can't have any bounties I don't want my no, bounties don't like bounties. No. They're the best. Mm. Mm, are mm. they? Are they really? Mm. 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 And then I've got nothing in my power step. Okay, so my third, I'm going to do the same attack. Boy. Oh, didn't show anything. <laughs> One hammer. One hammer, yeah. And this is on to the harvester again, yeah? Yeah. Right, so I need a dodge or a crit. Keep them alive. No. Play mind damage, isn't it? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, actually, I am going to kill him now because I'm going to play um, Raptor Strike. Choosing, <coughs> choosing me five within four hexes of a friendly leader, deal one damage to the chosen fighter. Okay. So the harvest are a Boo. So harvester's out of action. You've got another glory, so that's ten now. Mm -hmm. Anything you're a power step? Um, no. No. Okay. So my last go. So he has three wounds now and can't be driven back. I unfortunately can't. Sc if 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 I knew you were going to miss your next attack, I'd literally do nothing right now. I might. <laughs> you might, but you probably won't, because he's doing what? Three damage. Uh, two or two. Two damage. Two damage. Yeah. But three on a crit. Uh, uh no. No. Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes. No. Oh, hang on. I think I cheated, but I didn't want any crits. So that's all right. Yeah. No. He has got grievous and stagger. Right. Actually, so okay. you're, you this guy should have been staggered. Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah. Got to remember. Got to remember. It's, it's a, it, because it's slightly confusing. That's why because it's crit grievous one and stagger, but I think it's great. I don't know. Is it? Is it? So this card, crackling blade. This fighter's range of attack actions have, and it's got a little crit symbol, grievous yeah. Yeah. one. Yeah. And stagger. Right. So is that? Grievous one on a crit and stagger, or is it crit grievous, crit on a crit, you get grievous one and stagger? I think it's both. So on a crit, you get grievous one and stagger. So if you don't get a crit, you don't get either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. They could have made that much clearer by just putting the stagger before the, the crit, if that's what they meant. Or crit, yeah, crit symbol again. Put the crit symbol again, yeah. yeah. Either way, I think it's both, but it doesn't matter because. No, 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 I didn't write any crit, so it doesn't matter. But no, yeah. So, yeah, so I can conceivably do three damage, yes. I don't like that. How many wounds has he got? So Surround says that he thinks it sounds like it, it gives the crit, it gives a plus one damage, and it always has to. Well, that's what I thought too. Could be, could be. I mean, I'm not sure it, it does, either no, way. No, I don't think it does. He just forgot to put the stagger on if you, if yeah, in that yeah, case, but yeah. he killed him anyway, so. I did eventually. Yes. Right, I am going to, so it's my fourth go. Mm -hmm. So you could do three damage on a crit. So on my so fourth got three wounds? He's got three wounds. Okay. If it's any consolation, if it helps you, I'm not going to attack him because of what my objective was. But you'll attack him then? I, I may attack him. In fact, I'm almost certainly going to attack him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to Actually, I could him. attack him, but I couldn't kill him, so that would be stupid. I'm going to play it safe, <laughs> and on my last go, it's boring, but I'm going to move him to there. Okay. So he's just going to waddle off off of that objective, which ghouls me, but there we go. Ghouls? No, not ghouls, they're skeletons. Yeah. I'm going to charge here for my fourth. They're all charred. So your fourth, so nothing in the power steps, no. onto your fourth go. It gets quite quick near the end of the game, because there's not much um, to do. So I guess it's going to go and go for three hammers. 
I'm going to go for the three. Three hammers, two damage. You'd be silly not to. Oh, I get a nice defense roll. Uh, one hammer. So I have dodges on this guy. No, it's not shields. Doesn't matter either way because I roll a double so assist and that's nothing. two damage. That is enough to kill him, but you no, don't, don't get, get any gold. glory okay. because of worthless chaff, but that now goes away. But that is the last turn. Yes. And I, did you go first? I did. Okay. So I didn't score retake what is ours, which is hold three objectives. Um, if he just stayed on there and you hadn't killed him, I would have scored that for three, but I didn't, so it doesn't matter. I also don't, couldn't score March of the Dead for two because I needed five um, move or charge tokens, but I did score Eternal Legion, score an end phase of three or more friendly fighters reaching no one's or enemy's territory. Nicely done. Which gives me two, but I suspect it doesn't matter very yeah, much. I'm afraid I've scored all of mine. Yeah. It's called Swift Work. Score this name phase if the number of enemy fighters out of action is greater than the round number, e.g. three in round two. Yeah. And, and you've got four in round three. three. And I've got prime objective. Score this name phase if a friendly fighter is holding the highest valued objective in enemy territory. I'm on objective five. And I scored Flash of Light. Score this name phase if one or more friendly fighters are each in an edge hex in enemy, oh, in enemy territory. Bollocks. Ah! <laughs> I need to be able to read. So it's just gone there, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> but you wouldn't have had the same attack then, would you? It you would have been, done... no, no, I needed a crit and I wouldn't have killed him. Yeah. So then I wouldn't have scored the other one, so I wouldn't have gone there. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So it's it's 13 plays 8 in the end. So a convincing win. It was that charge with the warden and that double tap that took yeah, him out. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a gamble worth uh, taking. That's yeah. the problem with the, the support. Well, it's not the problem, but it's it's the main weakness of the support called guard. If you're ever up against them, so if I had get the warden gone. If I had read the card properly, mm. I'm not sure. I don't know what I'd have done because I was just thinking if I if he's not dead, and you'd left him there, you'd have got three glory, and I wouldn't have got because I hadn't realised that I. I think I only needed, thought I only needed three, but I needed to kill four of you. If I hadn't killed four of you, I wouldn't have scored that two glory one. Two glory one, and yeah. I wouldn't have scored the one glory one potentially. Yep. So, there you go. Yeah. There is an intro game of Underworlds, the start of start of set. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions about that, about this particular game, these particular warbands, or in general about the game, because it's only 10.30. So it seems to accelerate yeah. towards the end. As is usually the case uh, with a lot of these games, as you get nearer the end of the game, you just have less fighters left, so there's less to do. Um, is there anybody online right now watching that has any particular questions they would like us to answer around how any of the mechanics work or anything like that. Um, yeah, we can answer those now. Or, you know, if people are enjoying these, we can organise to do more of these in the future with other warbands, other sets, if people want to see other starts. We'll certainly do it with some out. magic. Yeah, yeah, we could do it with, with the Wintermoor set, because that's got, they don't have casters, but it has some things that use magic dice, stuff yeah, like that. In. Domitans versus Ephilims. Oh yeah, magic so everywhere. Magic, magic, magic. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if anybody's got anything. If they don't, then we can probably call it there, and uh, mm. you can get on with your evening. So I'll, I'll leave it open have they for a minute. Change the mechanic where killing enemy fighter allows for a reaction to place a breach token. No, but it's not in the starter set because you don't get. You don't get the breach tokens. You don't get extra breach yeah. tokens. Um, you so no, they haven't changed that. No. No, so, so what you can do then is you can, um, yeah, for anybody who's wondering what you're talking about, if, if there's a fighter here and Robin then were to attack this guy and kill him, when he kills him, he can then place a hex in his where he was, either side up, either the block side or the cover side, and, and then that would stay there till the end, depending on which side you put up. If you put the block side up, it stays there till the end of the round. You put it cover side up, it stays there for the rest of the game. That's the, under the current rules. Under the current rules, yeah. yes. Um, everybody pretty much always gets that, unless they are. Um, there's some some decks. There's Force of Frost decks. Some, well, I say some decks rely on you placing breach token. Yeah, and Force of Frost. And, does it? Um, yeah, because you, you want to. There's an objective in there for having two block hexes on the board. Oh, yeah. And take stuff it. like that. <laughs> but there's also ones that. where placing a block to hexes next to your fighters gives them sh yes. ice tokens and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's the Fearsome Fortress one, I think, is the only other yes. one that really cares about it. And uh, the Gravebreakers now, the Explorer one. Oh, which okay. Explorer Zondara's Grave Explorer. Well, she doesn't particularly need it, but the Gravebreakers, with, with the Explorer deck, you're trying to get your Explorer count up. Right, okay. You get one every time you place a breach token. So. Shadeborn, I guess, a little bit for the, for the cover hexes as yes. well, although. Yeah, 
Um, Shape worn are sadly in a bad place. Yeah, don't bother with them mostly. <laughs> um, it's a shame because they're the coolest, one of the coolest mechanics and one of the coolest set, set of models, I think, in the entire game. Um, but they're just so badly crippled because they're um, specialist they're mechanic. mechanic yeah. It's phased out, yeah. effectively. Which is a bit rush, but then it was like when they when they did that, the chosen axes and various other war bands yeah. got stuffed because the, all the objectives started face down. They did, which meant that so the many chosen axes were already stuffed. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. Um, there's, I was going to say something about the, yeah, I don't think there's many people who who tend to place those tokens. You can't place them when if the person who was killed was on an objective token, you can't place it then. Um, mm. But there's, there's not many other criteria. That's is it worth, there. just for absolute beginners, if any absolute beginners still watching, is it worth just going over the things you can do with your, with your your when it's your activation? Let us know. You're we've watching right few, now. If there's anybody few, watching right now, shout yeah. out and we can we can talk them through. Because there's a few things you can do. So you moving and charging is what you do most of all. But you can... You can do a few other things. Guard. You can... Things that, well, so we never do. You can't. It's not in the rules for the Star Stick. It's stun and bash... Barge. Barge, not bash. Bash, barge, yeah. starge. Sparge and Sarge. Snatch and scrage and blatch. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if there's anybody online watching who cares, we'll give you another 30, 40 seconds. <laughs> uh, let us know if there's any other questions you've got Speak about Speak now or forever hold your peace. Yes, or we'll, we'll say good night to everybody. Good night. Good night. Uh, we are going to try and be doing more uh, live sessions every other Wednesday. Every other Wednesday, so a couple of weeks' time we'll be back. Yep, uh, and that'll be literally just after our... Our tournament, won't it? Our, our just most before, tournament, I think. Or just before, yeah. one of the two. Yeah, literally, just before or just after. <laughs> literally just around <laughs> that time. Great game, thanks for presenting. No problem, I'm glad you joined us. I think it's the first time you've been in, I think, on a live chat. It might be, and so hopefully you'll be back. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell, all yeah. that good stuff. And uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks, probably with a more traditional nemesis matchup. I haven't yeah. decided yet. I, I'm just, my head is completely not in the game. We, I mean, we haven't, we haven't met up for a fortnight. No, because you decided to go on holiday. Sorry. And then just before that, there was like six new warbands effectively and three new rivals decks yeah. just dropped. It's like, so nah. got no idea. No, no it was idea seven, seven new warbands, really. No idea what's going Zondara, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wo yeah. Wintermore and the four re reissues. Yeah. So. so from going from where I thought I had quite a good handle on the game, I now feel like I know literally nothing. You know nothing, John Snow. So, little into more time there. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've just been. I'm nearly at the end of Game of Thrones now. Oh, yeah. Like two episodes off. Okay. So it's got quite I thought dull. You didn't now. like it. I didn't the first <laughs> time. Okay. Because I was reading the books. Oh, okay. And then obviously, what's his name's not going to release another book now for about thirty years. So I figured, you know He's what? He's going to die before it's Probably, finished. probably. Yeah. So I figured, you know what? I'll just watch the TV series. At least it finishes. Do you know something? <laughs> I have not read or watched Game of Thrones. I quite like the TV series, and um, once you ignore the changes they make from the book, I think it's an all right TV series, although it does suffer from that thing that he had the tendency to kill people off all the time, which no. to start with was quite shocking, because that yeah. didn't happen a lot. Uh, you tend to get the good guy, and you're like, oh, the good guy's going to get to the bad guy and kill him, but it's kind of the equivalent of Lord of the Rings, of, of them finding Frodo and just cutting him to pieces horrifically in front of the rest of his mates, and you're like... That's not meant to happen. <laughs> so, but because he does it so often, every time he introduces a new character, you just stop caring about right. him. He's like, you're going to be dead in a minute. It doesn't matter. Fud says, nice background for his painting. Thank you for the show. You're very welcome, Fud. Yeah, I've been, I've been, yeah, listening, watching that. It's literally been on the on my monitor whilst I've been painting there. So it, it gets you think, into the, the I frame think of mind. Us. Oh, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like maybe. thinking of it. Maybe he's talking about Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, I I started to read the book like before they made them into TV program. I yeah. got bored, and I um, that was the first one, whatever the first one was called, and and I never went back to it. And then when it came the out, first one was Game of Thrones. When I came out, oh, I was like, the hide. I was like, I've been enjoy fantasy books for I don't know how long, and there everybody likes it. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> oh yes, we've all done that. Yeah. Oh, this thing's popular. Well, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> yes, and so and then then uh, and we don't have because it was on Sky, wasn't it? We don't have Sky. Yeah, so. it's on now TV. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but Sky. We, we don't have that. Um, so I, I would have watched got, it if I didn't have it. If I, I never didn't got around to TV. watching it, and now it's like everybody says that the ending is rubbish. So it's like, well, if the ending is rubbish, I'm not going to bother watching it. <laughs> Sadly, so it might be. He meant us. It. 
Well, specifically yeah. me. Thank you, Pod. I think. Yeah, no, that's okay. me. <laughs> oh, no, it says you. You. Oh, yeah, it's you. you. Oh, yeah, well, oh, it's you. Yeah. Oh, was it you? Yeah, we're both going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, well, uh, everyone has gone quiet, so we yep. will take Thank you very much. We won't our... go through. Oh, surround says, oh, oh, oh. I know you've done this before, but what are each of your three top war bands for beginners? We actually, didn't we record a whole... I think we recorded a whole little series of, or not series, but like a whole video about what the best ones to start were. And then while before, while it was still in the cutting room, GW relaunched the four new war bands and then it's kind of yeah, messed it up. Yeah. So the best ones for beginners for rivals, oh, I can't remember what we said now. See, I think like um, like the, the Skinnerkin are actually a good starter war bands. Yeah, they're they not, they're, they've got a, a few the little tricks, box. but they're nice and easy to get. Box. Yeah. They're pretty good. Um, I mean, I have to say the fast riders are very easy to play out of the box, and some of their some of their objectives are a bit. Ugh, you're kind of like, oh, I don't really. They they maybe it's the same for all, all war bands, but when I have played them, I just feel like you you score something and you pick something up. It's like, Ugh. well, the only way to score that was to have set it up from the beginning of the turn, and now I've got no chance, well, which think, is a bit annoying. I think that's the rivals thing because yeah, most of be. the rivals decks be. generally have like that kind of dual thing of. Got to be good at this, got to be good at yeah. that. I don't know if they're easy to play, but the Crimson Court have a very good rival stick. Yeah, I, I think they are quite easy to play once you... Because you're mostly just getting in a wreck face. I haven't played them because I'm undead somewhere um, now. <laughs> you, can, you, can play, you can play them if you want. Contractually yeah. obliged. That's not, not true because you play the Grimwatch. Um, That's true. Who else? I think even though they're not great, the Stab Lads are quite straightforward. Again, they're mostly just quite aggro-y, but they're not great. Ephelins are quite easy to play. They've got a faff. They've got a faff, but they're good. Yeah. They're strong. The Nile Spirit Pack, again, they have a slightly odd mechanic. The problem with the lot of them is they have slightly odd, odd in spy mechanic or odd, odd mechanics, but the Nile Spirit Pack are very strong. Depends but on what you mean by easy to play. Or well, he didn't say easy, easy to play. To he win. just said your top three warbands for beginners. beginners so yeah. I think ease, ease of play is, is a key factor in there. I would say the fast riders. I would, I any would, of the Stormcast warbands, although obviously you can't play the early ones in rivals. Um, oh, we've got another Ooh. question. So sorry, we'll, we'll come back to that. I also think Scavix was another one of ours because it was mostly mm. fairly straightforward. There wasn't a lot of mechanics to get the hang of yeah. and the objectives weren't too bad. Um, Inner Spin says, can I check, do both players get an opportunity to react to the same action? They do now. Yep. They never used to, and it used to be a bone of contention. And then yep. they fiddled with the order, and it was even more of a bone of contention. And then, then they just quietly changed it to both. You can only react once to the same reaction window, but you yep. can now react once each. Yes. Storm of Celestis. And, see. and it starts um, with the person with whose the person. turn it is, rather than your opponent then butting in with something, which was even more annoying. So John says Storm of Celestis. I... It's my least favourite warband of the 50 million warbands that there are, I think. Storm of so I would never suggest that. <laughs> but I think they are quite right. straightforward. They but might yeah. be right, but I think they have a horrible play experience where the only way to inspire them is to use that big crossbow attack. Which is like a two-hammer attack. And if you miss it, then they don't inspire this turn. Yeah. And I, tactically, tactics or whatever, when you're first playing this game, half the fun is inspiring the warband, I think. Yeah. And quite often that's that's quite key to whoever you're playing against anyway. So, yeah. so, but that said, Creepers, Wraith Creepers, which are in the same box as the Storm Celestials, or were in the same. They're a good Star Wars. They're, a good they're Star pretty War. straight Wars. Iron only, Souls only, as well. The only yeah, Iron Souls good. The only problem with Dreepers is they've had a couple of FAQs, which if you're trying to play them new as a starter. And we did say all this in our video. It's like don't you that technically. They're a good warband, but they've had erratas, and that for a new person might be confusing if they yeah. go somewhere and you go, oh, I'm going to do this, and your opponent goes, you can't do that. Yeah. And you go, what? 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 Um, I, but yeah, now they've brought the new ones out, I think people like Gits and Scritch are also yes, possibly quite go back good. Well, I think the Molog, Molog isn't too bad now. Yeah. Yeah, so there are, yeah, I think I think any in the, if you can get hold of it, any in the Mirror Titty box, which is down there, and I can't get it because it's got a bad back. Um, in the Mirror City box are pretty strong. Yeah, Scritch is quite nice, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's got um, quite a nice Gits, little, now. Gits have got nine fighters that perhaps not so good for... Possibly not, uh, but it's nice to have all those bodies for a newer player because yeah. then if you lose a fighter or two, it's not quite so bad. Whereas yeah. if you're yeah, if you're in a smaller warband... Oh, top warbands, yeah, not, never mind, not Stormless Lessons. No, we're not talking about top, though, John. We are we're talking, talking about, about ease beginner. of play, ease of play. Um, Look, I can reach it. They, they are easy. You liar. You've been claiming benefits for months. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Worst of it, they helped me back at the weekend. <laughs> um, 
yeah, easy warbands. I think Celestis probably are an easy warband, but they do have that negative play experience that, oh, I'm going to roll my attack, and I failed. So not only have I missed the attack, but I'm not inspired for another round. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a shame. I don't like it. We also, I mean, we also said a few of the early warbands, which, again, got re-released here, uh, but they were like, you can't get them for love nor money now. That's, no, that's the other problem. There's no point in recommending Mind you, these just came out. You can't get them for love nor money. No, either. true. I mean, I would probably recommend something like... Um, Magor's Fiend of Breakneck Slaughter or Tooth and Claw. They're really, really simple and just go in and pretty dirty, places. but you can't get Magor's Fiend. No. I mean, you don't need to get the cards, so you might be able to get the models. If you weren't going to bother... Print the cards out. You could print the cards. If you weren't going to bother, if you were just going to play straight rivals. But I, mean, but, but I think where those older warbands, where the, if they, they don't really shy anywhere, but where they do shy is, in, is, is if you can get a bit of Nemesis going on and... They've some of the some of their faction cards because they were written at the infancy of the game. They're a bit. Some of them are quite OP. Mm. There's some quite good faction cards. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it was the early seasons. Were some of the only seasons that had a if this fighter dies, roll a dice, and they might not die. Yeah. Some of those kind of things. Gerzag and uh, Fuel yeah. had it. And, and, and McGaw's got one where you can just inspire somebody. Yeah. Just yeah. I'm just going to inspire that person. Yeah. Then I'm going to club your face. In. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, th I think for for warbands you can get now that that would be simple. I definitely would say Skinnerkin. I think mm, are on there. I think you're right. They've not got too much in the way of tricks that you got to get the hang of, no. uh, and they seem quite easy. And they're one of the few warbands I've played out of the box and scored relatively highly. Although saying that it was up against the Brethren, so maybe it's just because the Brethren poop in that matchup, so it's much easier to score with them. Brethren don't seem to have too many scoring opportunities. No. At least when I played them. Skinnikin might might struggle more if you can't roll crits or if you're up against like a three fight or elite warband, maybe you'll struggle more. Maybe. Yeah. But at least they score at least they can do their stuff yeah. when they get crits. So it's not like you have to kill people. Because yeah. some of the other war it's when you've got to kill somebody. Like just spoilers. I, yeah, just spoilers, <laughs> just spoilers, yeah. Oh, I've got to kill two fights, have I? Oh, you've got Stormcast, have you? Yeah. Oh, I guess I won't yeah. be inspiring. Cries in Skinnerkin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully that right rambling response answers your questions. Maybe now that the warbands are out, we'll have a look back and we'll do like our top five beginner warbands and top five beginner rivals decks because there are certain war rivals decks that are like um, Tooth and Claw, Breakneck Slaughter. Some are definitely easier to use than others. Thorns have a wide variety of fights, easy inspire mechanic, though dangerous, and a couple of slightly tricky movement challenges. Plus, they use magic to all the game mechanics. That is true. They are quite nice, the Thorns. Yeah. And they, I think they. I suspect. I don't know, but I think we're going to see them return to the to the top of the meta. Yeah, they've they've definitely they've not been they've not been made any less brittle in the in the redo. Whereas, mm -hmm. like some of the gets lost and dodge. Whereas. Yeah. That they don't. They have been made less punchy because the both the queen, the, the bride queen and Varclav don't hit quite as hard as right. they used to, but they still got oodles of movement and stuff yeah. going on and things like that. So I, yeah, I think that the, the bride queen could definitely is, is definitely going to be. Did you see a, who won? I didn't one. see who won in the end. The tournament in Poland. There was a tournament in Poland at the weekend. No, I missed that. No. Did anyone online see that one? It was um, yeah. There was quite a lot of Domitans got through. Bit of a surprise. To the, yeah, well, um, yeah, they obviously <laughs> but they're championship, aren't they, in Poland? I think no, it was a Nemesis game. Oh, was it? Because oh, okay. it was the one that had 36 out of 46 players were playing Breakneck Slaughter. Oh, okay. Which would suggest that Breakneck Slaughter is OP or it's the only one that's available in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be that. I mean, Breakneck Slaughter, you can almost completely avoid the whole Breakneck Slaughter mechanic as well. Yeah. There's not that many cards that give you the counters. So. Right next door to must be one of that. It's happened a lot in my war, in my um, underworld's career. It's like, oh, I don't really think much of this, and then you find out it's everybody's it's playing. The it. best thing it's ever. the best thing ever. Like, okay, this game is awesome. I was looking at getting the rivals deck. I just have a bunch of warbands from playing iOS. I'll watch this video later. Okay, really like excellent. Yes, do Byron, and if you have any questions, do stick them in the comments, and we will do our best to get back to you. Yes, and depending on the warbands. Uh, do check out underworldsdb.com because he has all the cards on there. So, so if you you've could got print and sleeve them if you just want to play casually. Yep, yeah, so you could do that or you can go on eBay and look for the Warband decks if you want. And uh, yes, you can then go out and get some Rivals decks, get the Warbands cards, you can start dick building. We have yeah. done a video called something like the Ultimate Beginners slash Returning Players Guide 
which we do go through the different formats yes, of rivals yeah, yeah, yeah. and nemesis yeah. and championships. I knew that. I knew we'd done that. We definitely did that. Yeah, yeah. So that. do go and check that out on the channel. Yeah. And that should hopefully explain a bit more on how all the card mechanics work because it's that kind of thing of is it worth us even doing a video around how to build deck, how, how that kind of side of things. It's probably not worth us doing it. No. Somebody no. else. Somebody else. Is. Well, just the rules oh, and, and okay, how to build okay. deck. So yeah. <laughs> so and if you haven't do like subscribe and ring that bell and all that yes. good stuff. So I think um, we're gonna go if home. anybody's got any other questions they want to ask, shout now. Otherwise, we're, we're going to say our goodbyes for this evening. It's time to say goodbye. Would yeah, we're back in a couple of weeks live, and then Pete and I are meeting up next week to record some other stuff. And decided yet, yeah, yeah. No. And if you are in the in the Sussex and Surrey, London area, we are meeting on Tuesday at the Gamers Guild in Red Hill yep. for our Tuesday night meet up for Underworlds so come along for that if you are but probably most of you aren't but yeah. do come along if you're watching this if, if you're in that area and yeah. um, you can uh, check us out on Facebook we have posts up very regularly on when we're going to be live uh, when new videos come out all that kind of stuff so you can keep an eye there and find out when, when we're doing stuff and we generally try and plan a few weeks ahead so you'll be able to tell what's coming up yeah and then GW release something and smash all of our plan to pieces so thank you all for watching us. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're watching this after the fact, do stick any questions you've got in the comments in in the comments below. Yeah. And we'll see you soon. See you all. Bye. Bye.